morning dear friends welcome to my kitchen today I'm gonna do some shitties I've been wanting to make shitties but just seems like it's never enough time but I'm gonna do it today so I'm gonna show you how I make my shitties this is how my mom made it and this is how I do it so I have been all morning cutting um, some of my meat um, I'm doing about 60 pounds, um, as you can see, um, and I've been cutting it, and I'll show you how I cut it. I like it small pieces because um, the flavor absorbs better and um, it goes better through the, through the machine or through the, um, the funnel. Uh, I still like to use the funnel. I have um, one of those you plug it to, the funnel you plug it to your mixer, but it seems like it takes forever for me. I don't know what am I doing wrong. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. So today, I cut my meat, I marinated, and leave this overnight um, marinating. And then tomorrow, I um, put it in the casings and then I have, um, I smoke it. So I cut it into um, the big slices. I started cutting this big slices and then I cut it into small little pieces. Um, and then I cut it in one inch cubes. Um, I find it that it's easier and it goes a lot faster to cut it. And when you cut it, see if you, the meat is still a little bit frozen. This one is already not, is all thawed out because I've been cutting all this. So I have here about 65 pounds of meat. And um, I hadn't made sooner because I've been wanting to get melagetta, but now that I have my own melagetta, I'm gonna do it. Um, we used to make Shuris once a year. My mom used to make, I think it was two different kinds of shuris. This was the regular shuris, and then that was the shuris we call shuris morsh, which she would add some of those. We didn't like it, but we had to eat it. There was no choice. But she would add pieces of the heart and just different pieces she would add into the, the the shiris. I didn't like it and it was more kind of grounded which I kind of in a way reminded me of what we call linguisa today but linguisa has more of just the meat so anyway but she would do this when we killed the pigs um, and we would do the, the shiris the two different kinds I have a bigger bowl but I had this one dirty and I didn't want to go get another one, which I'm going to have to. Um, I'm going to put all this meat marinated inside of a cooler. And I put it in a cooler because it's it keeps it cool and I put the top filled up with ice. So I put it inside of a big garbage bag. Because um, if you don't have the refrigerators that and the, the cooler that I have, it's very insulated. It's uh, perfect for people who go hunting and fishing and that kind of stuff. They can bring all their, their meats in there. So that's what I'm gonna use. So I put all my meat in there, marinated, filled the top with ice. Usually I go the next day and it's still filled. The ice is still all uh, frozen on the top. That's how insulated this cooler is. But it makes it easy because if if I didn't have that, I couldn't be putting it on um, on a refrigerator. I, I don't have a big refrigerator to keep all this, and you need to refrigerate this. This needs to be cold. This needs to stay at least 40 below degrees. So now I'm going to get all my other ingredients and uh, get my cooler and I'll show you how I uh, do all um, the marinating. Okay, dear friends, um, I finished cutting all my meat. 
So now I'm going to um, put all my spices, what I do. Um, this is garlic. I put it in my food processor and chopped it and grinded it real fine. This is just half of the meat. I'm doing in batches because it won't fit. It'll be too much for my back if I do um, all at once. And I'm gonna put some of the my melagata. This is some I had in my refrigerator. So I'm gonna add, and I'm gonna add half of this. I'm not gonna be stingy on my on the pepper. And I'm gonna put some, I never do put this, but I've seen it before and I like that it gives a color. This is um, paprika, uh, Portuguese paprika or chloral. So I'm gonna put two tablespoons of this. And it's more for the color than anything. I like that gives that red color. Um, my pepper has already salt, but I always like to add a little bit salt because this is a lot of meat. So I'm gonna add four tablespoons. So tomorrow before I put it in the casings, I'm gonna fry a little bit and, uh, and this is all gonna be mixed in one. So um, I'll fry a little bit of little pieces and see if it needs more salt. If it does, I add it to it. If not, then it'll be fine. But I usually add more salt, but I know because my melagueta has salt, um, I'm not gonna put more than four tablespoons. And this is kosher salt. This is not the fine salt. If it's the fine salt, you, you put less. And then I'm gonna put burgundy wine. I use this burgundy wine. Um, now, how much am I adding? It's how I feel. Uh, I'm probably gonna put it in this pan here. I would say four cups of wine, but if I see that needs a little bit more, um, I'm good. I I add more, but if not, then I leave. It. Um, I like do it in batch because I have a bad back, and if I do everything at once, it's it's too much for for my back. Now, I usually, I take some of the fat from the meat, but I find sometimes that the meat is a little dry. You need some fat when you make linguisa. I mean, chorizo. You need some of that, um, that fat. Now, some of you might say, well, what's the difference chorizo from linguisa? So, chorizo is spicier, so it has more of a kick and it is chunkier it's chunks like this if it was linguisa all this is grounded and then it's put it in the casings that's the difference that i know i mean somebody else might have a different way of describing but that's what i know is that um the shiris have is chunkier we never had linguista, like I said. I guess in a way it was that what we call shitty smush because it was grounded. My mom grounded everything, the heart and all that in there. Um, I see, I probably want a little bit more pepper. I, I, I don't see enough color. So it's like I said, it's to your taste. Um, if you find that, and this pepper has a little kick. Um, because I know I've tried it. And usually I wouldn't add it, but my husband won't eat this, so it's fine. I like a little kick. And I might add a little bit more paprika. I want more color in these. But that's all you gotta do. And this is very cold, because some of these, um, some of these uh, um, pieces of meat were still frozen, and that's what you want. I will have a recipe of the total of all the stuff that I put in, but because I'm changing the quantity, it changes as I make. So I'm gonna put four tablespoons of paprika in this pan. Maybe a tablespoon more of salt. 
it's like I said, you go as you, you feel the, um, the, the mixture and it's going to mix. So let's say if this pan had more salt than the other one, it's all going to mix. So it's all going to be fine. This one is more pureed. So I'm going to add all this. Like I said, it, it will make because it's all going into one, one container. And in my cooler, I put ice in the bottom of the cooler. For those that don't have, if you're going to make. I mean, this is a, a lot of work. So why make a little bit? That's why when I make, I make uh, a big quantity. Uh, and I, I share, sometimes I sell it. So um, I, I always make a big quantity. So I don't have refrigerators that can accommodate all this. So I put it in the cooler. So I put ice in the bottom of the cooler. I'm gonna put a little bit more wine, just because you can never have too much wine. Um, so I put ice in the bottom and I put a big, large uh, bag of um, garbage bag in there and the reason I did that I could have put it inside my cooler and then just put the ice you know uh, on top but that's my son's cooler I don't want to he's letting me borrow I don't this is a Yeti it's a very expensive cooler I don't want to ruin his cooler so I'm gonna dump this in the garbage bag and that's, there's no other way you do this. And you have it. And then once I'm done uh, with the other half, I, um, I put bags of ice on top. I close the, that and it will seal proper and it will be um, cold enough that it can stay in there. So I'm going to do the other half. Here you have my friends. Here's all my shitties. I mix everything with what I had before. And like I said, now I'm gonna close this bag real good. And then I'm gonna put some ice, take that air as much as possible. Have another bag of ice if I find that it needs more ice and then I keep this really secured and it's gonna stay here come on in friends here it is the morning after I made I marinated my Louisa and now I'm gonna take the ice and as you can see this is how much ice is still in here. So it was still a lot of ice. So, that, so now I'm going to take some pieces of the meat so I can um, mar uh, fry them so I can try them. You've got to be careful because some of this water that came from the, you don't want it to go into your linguisa. So anyway, I'm gonna take a couple pieces and I'm gonna fry it and I'll come back and show you. Here you go, my friends. I tried my uh, linguisa. I fried a little bit before I put in the casings when I decided to make breakfast. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. It tastes good, but I like it a little bit more salt because um, pork meat needs salt. If it doesn't, it doesn't taste good. So anyway, I'm gonna have some breakfast now and then I'm gonna start put it on the casings. Okay, friends, I already started putting the, some of the linguine in the casings. 
I did put more salt and I put more pepper. But like I said, I will give a recipe for the right amount and the quantity of salt and pepper that you would need. But also, it also depends the taste, how you like it. If you like it spicy, if you like stuff salty. So, I mean, these are perfect. Um, they're the salt and, and the pepper is just right. Because I like it spicy, but not too spicy. So, of course, I'm doing the old-fashioned way. This, uh, this funnel, it was a funnel my mom used to use when we were kids. And it's very old. Um, and I like, like I said, I have a machine that I put it in my mixer. But I think the funnel is too small. And I haven't been able to. Every time I think about it, it's when I'm making it and it's too late to order um, a bigger funnel. So I just sit here by myself and I spend a, a whole day just doing this. You know, um, I never make this, this quant large quantity at one time. I don't think, but it, it goes by quick. And uh, um, so I buy these casings at a local butcher here in town, um, but I'm sure you can find it. And if you can't, you can find it ordering somewhere in the, on the internet. Um, so um, I, when I buy it, it lasts me a long time because um, I keep them in the freezer with some salt and water and they last me for quite a while. So um, all I'm gonna do is stuff it, the meat in here. And you wanna make sure that you put the casing far in. I must not put all the way in. You wanna push it all the way up so you don't have to uh, keep losing it. So, so you keep putting the meat and then what are you gonna do? I have a bobby pin and you see these little pockets? This is air. You want to poke these. So as you see, as you push the meat down and you see those pockets, you want it. And what it's going to do is the air is going to come out. And what I did is I just give it a knot, a regular knot on the casing. My mom used to tie it. It's too much work. So I find ways to improvise and make it easy. Uh, the less string I have to use, the better. So you push all your meat and you kind of want it tight, but then you don't want it too tight where it will burst. And you want to poke in the air on both sides. And you just keep pushing the meat. And sometimes what I do is I fill the whole casing and then I go back and do this. But for to show you, I'm going to do it this way. So you just keep poking. And then when you have the length that you liked, I twist it. I just twist it. And then you keep doing the next one. Now the next one, when you go twisted, you're going to twist it the opposite direction. Because if you um, twist it the same direction, you're going to take the, the twist apart. So, and that's what I'll, I'll keep doing it. Um, I lay my casing on top and just keep stuffing. So anyway, um, and you just keep filling and then keep pushing until you get to the, the size you want. Um, now when you get these, the casings, they're very long. You don't want to have you cut them in half or sometimes even in thirds and fourths. You cut them where you have a length that you can, um, you can handle. So, um, you know, you don't um, have to be um, working with a very long um, linguista because it's, it's hard. So I'm just going to keep pushing this. And then when I do at the end, 
the last, I did the same thing I did at the beginning. I tied it a knot and sometimes I tie them together so they become like a circle. This is what I did, see? So now I'm gonna hang this and sometimes I put a string. If I find that it's too hard that they're falling apart, I put a string and this, this is what I'm gonna put it in my, um, in my smoker to dry is like that. But if you have a piece that is not um, too long, you might wanna put some string and put a loop so you have something to hang it on your, on your pole for the smoker. So you just keep looking for those air bubbles. They keep popping and just keep pushing until, and you want, like I said, I, you want the linguist a little bit, um, you don't want it too, um, too soft. You want it firm because it's gonna shrink. Uh, my, my linguist is all twisted here. I twisted too much on the wrong way. And you'll find yourself, it'll take some practice. You don't need, you just give a, give a couple twists. You don't need a lot of twists. And I tried sometimes I put them like this side by side. So I kind of see, okay, you know, that's the length I want. So, um, cause you kind of want them almost uniform, the same size, but sometimes it doesn't happen. So then I turn it this way and I'm gonna poke it and keep pushing it. And then twist it. So when the next one comes, in the old days, we had to tie all that. We tied every little end. It was so hard, it took all day. That's why today I do it. And like I said, I stuff and put the meat in it first, leave them aside, and then, then just do the, the, the twisting and taking the air bubbles out at the end. So it goes, it goes a lot faster. So I think this one has enough because they're pretty much all uniform. And sometimes you find that your um they come apart. Just keep twisting them over here. Don't don't worry about it. So I'm gonna give a knot in here. And like I said, sometimes if the the casing is too small and I don't have very much patience. So what I do is I always have a string and I tie it. I just give it a knot, come on. And here you have it. This one, kids. See? So now I'm gonna do all the rest and then I'll show you when they're ready for the smoker. Okay, friends, I'm in my last link. It took me three and a half hours to put all that uh, in the casings and tired. So um, I found that if the casings were too long, if you start stuffing in this side and you keep pushing it to go to this way, um, it's going to be hard. You're going to break the casing. So just fill it up this side halfway and then go over here and fill it up the other halfway. So that way um, you're not, uh, uh, it doesn't keep the breaking on you. So um, like I said, it took me three and a half hours. I already have one uh, batch in a smoker. The smoker is full. My smoker is not very big, but it does, it does the job. Um, so I'm just, uh, uh, taking all the air pockets and then uh, forming the links. And I try to make the links all at the same, the same um, 
size. Sometimes it's hard because um, if the casing is not um, the same size as the other one, it's kind of not, not that easy. But anyway, and here I have my linguiça, my churis, not linguiça. This is not linguiça. I keep saying linguiça, it's a bad habit. This is churis. This is churis caseiro. Homemade churis. So at the end, I was, I went and got the strings. It makes it easier and faster because this casing, it can be very slippery and try to tie it a knot. I get very impatient. So I went in, got some string and did it. I, I was just thinking here, oh my gosh, took me three and a half hours to do 65 pounds. Tired, stuff it, put it in a smoker. It would take us all day in the Azores. And we weren't doing any more than this. What it was is we were talking more than we were working. And I guess my mom was right when she used to say, you're talking too much. So anyway, so now I'm gonna show you what I have in a smoker and then I'm gonna be doing this in batches. Here I have my smoker these are ready to take it out so i'm just gonna take these out and then i'll uh and i'm gonna put um another batch so those these were here about three and a half hours put another batch and this is how I do it. I lay it in here and then I try to twine it um, in, the, in the, the stick. You just gotta lay it around and see how the, they work. And you have to be careful because sometimes when you go put them in the in the stick they can burst which i see one of them already did uh, I just went. here you have it my second batch i have one more batch to do and i'm uh i'm gonna keep an eye it's gonna take me at least maybe three hours to smoke, just making sure that there's plenty of wood chips all the time. And we'll be done soon. Friends, here's all my shitties. It's all cool. Now it's ready for me to be bag, bag it and put them in a the freezer. Okay, friends. My shitties is all done. I smoke all of it. It's been a long day, but it's all done and it's all cool. So now I'm gonna put in my food saver bags and put it in a freezer. And I'll have shitties for the, for the winter at least. Um, this is an easy recipe to make and it's easy to handle. And there's nothing like shitties kazade. There's nothing like your own shitties. Um, and there are ingredients, you can find them um, anywhere. If you don't have your own malagueta, you can find malagueta in pretty much any uh, Portuguese food, um, food markets. And uh, so try it. This is an easy and, uh, um, and you will see the taste. It tastes so much better than the one you buy in the stores. So now I'm gonna put all this in bags, put it in the freezer. We have shitties for the, re for the winter. And I will have a recipe, it's a small recipe, so it will be easier for you to, to work with. And, uh, um, you know, and try it. Try to make your own. Experiment. I mean, it's easy. So, um, anyway, 
Let's get cooking. Have a good day. Stay safe. Here it is, friends. All my shitties. All bagged. Ready to go to the freezer. And to different destination. For my kids. For some friends. So, it's a good day of work. Good day of work. I got shitties here to last me the winter. So you try it and you'll be pleased. <laughs>